Welcome to our review on the limitations of the particle model. So we've already looked at the particle model and what's good about it and what we can use it for. But we also need to bear in mind that there are some drawbacks and some limitations to using this. So the first thing we're going to consider is the size of these particles. So the smallest particles that make up a substance are atoms and the smallest atom are helium atoms. Now, helium atoms come in at this absolutely tiny diameter of 62 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. So these things are absolutely tiny. Now, if we then consider the distance between two helium atoms when they're in their gas state, that is 55 times larger than the diameter of the atom itself. So if you imagine trying to picture how you could draw a scale model of these gases, it's just impossible really okay because what we're looking at there is you've got these absolutely tiny tiny little atoms that have got this vast space between them so trying to put those two things together into one graphical representation is incredibly hard one thing you might be asked to do on the exam is to calculate the ratio of distance to diameter for the atoms in order to do that, all you're going to do is take the distance between the atoms and divide that by the diameter of the atom itself. So to give you an example of the kind of question you could see, calculate the ratio when the mean distance between two helium atoms is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 9 meters and the atoms have a diameter of 6.2 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. So all we can do is use our equation on top there. So the distance between the atoms is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 9 and divide that by the diameter of the atom 6.2 times 10 to the minus 11. Now I would suggest that you play around with your calculator you're going to use in the exam well in advance because they've all got their own little quirks on how they let you use all the standard form. So make sure that you know how to use it on your calculator that you'll use in your exam. As soon as you've got that plug those numbers in then you'll get an answer of 0.548 times 10 to the 2, which could also be written as 55. Now, this could very well be a multiple choice question, so just look for either of those two answers there. If it's a short answer question, unless they actually give a specific requirement for it to be expressed in standard form, then always go with the whole number version. We also need to understand how these particles are actually held together. And the way that these particles are held together is by this stuff called electrostatic forces. So these forces of attraction are basically between positive and negative charges. And what we find is where you've got a positive charge, that's going to attract a negative charge and vice versa. What we do find, though, is that the distance between those particles has an impact on the strength of that force of attraction. So that if our particles are further apart, say in a gas, then the weaker forces will be present. Whereas if those particles are really close together, because obviously you've got those positive and negatives very close, then that makes for a much stronger force of attraction. So just remember that when we're looking at our actual different states of matter, when it's in a gas form, the electrostatic forces of attraction will be much weaker than the exact same particles in their solid form, because they're just further apart from each other in the gas. So we do have three key limitations then that we need to remember when we're talking about the particle model. So there are the three things that the particle model does not take into account that we need to bear in mind as those limitations. First of all, the forces between the particles. It's not actually taken into account whatsoever. It doesn't have any account for the size of the particles. It's all treated as if they're the same and it doesn't consider the space between the particles. And again, that will vary depending on the individual entities we're talking about. So if you get a question asking about what the limitations of the particle model are, any of those three answers would be worth a mark to you. So by the end of this video, hopefully you do now know that there are three key limitations of our particle model and can explain what each of them are in turn, as well as being able to calculate the ratio of distance to diameter for the atoms.